Hello and welcome to Reroll. My name is Angus Morrison and this is April. And April is apparently the new January. With regard to new releases, I believe the technical term is bugger all. Honestly, there is so little to be excited for this month. We spent February and March pigging out on some seriously rich stuff and all of a sudden we've gained £20 and the fridge is empty. But there is Knife of Dunwall coming out on the 16th, which I have to say is the most enthusiastic I can remember being about DLC. I didn't do a video review for Dishonored, but my written one for Vasti was very, very positive. So it'll be interesting to see how Arcane develop that world. And then there is Dead Island Riptide, which I am less than enthusiastic about, because the best thing about Dead Island was its teaser trailer, but we shall see. I, meanwhile, have a fancy new microphone, so hopefully there'll be generally higher sound quality, or at the very least it'll sound less like popcorns frying in the background. And in addition, I have a fancy new Facebook page, so head over to facebook.com forward slash am.rerolling to check that out. Uh, please do like and subscribe, and if you are feeling particularly benevolent, share this video. It really helps me out and keeps the channel growing in new and unexpected ways. Today I will be tackling the issue of hardcores, casuals and Dead Space 3, because this debate will never die, but rises again harder and stronger. Uh, the relentless hardcore v casual Game of Thrones was not something I'd originally connected with my criticism of Dead Space 3. You might fairly point to the microtransactions as being relevant to it, but in my head that was a separate issue regarding the general tone of the game. But then I got into an argument on YouTube, which admittedly isn't an achievement in itself. I mean, give me five minutes and some COD insults and I'll stir up some trouble. Uh, but this argument defied sense on such an epic scale that I'm going to have to drop some knowledge. Uh, the worst part was the clearly good intentions underlying the counter-arguments. I wasn't dealing with your standard troll whereby you come up with a suitably devastating response and go about your business. This was a firmly held viewpoint with quite worrying implications. Not to be melodramatic, of course. But let us start at the beginning. Uh, those of you interested in the full and gory picture can find my Dead Space 3 review in the description below or lurking about my channel, but here are the cliff notes. Dead Space 3 was competent, and if that isn't damning with faint praise, then nothing is. In all fairness, it had made significant bounds from Dead Space 2 in terms of visuals. Uh, the PC port was graphically very, very good, and its levels juxtaposed these cramped and dark corridors with some beautifully drawn open vistas. Uh, the Combat 2 was taken almost wholesale from its predecessor. Uh, Isaac Clarke is a hefty character, slow to manoeuvre, but it really felt like there was some weight behind his motions. Which is useful, considering that the primary mode of extracting loot from enemies is vigorous stomping. This sluggishness and visual acuity, utilised in a world which was foreboding, menacing in its stillness and unknown danger, is a recipe for top quality horror. But Dead Space 3 possesses no such world. Honestly, I've seen lambs more threatening. As a horror game, it is naff. And I'm fully expecting the retort, well, it's not meant to be a horror game, is it? Well, yeah, that's the problem. I'm actually going to cop out and evade that question by referring you to my video on reboots that I did a couple of weeks ago, because I tackle that issue in some more depth and it'll save me time here. So, instead of building up suspense, Visceral opt to just throw in this hurricane of undead monstrosities for you to cut your way through. It's like Necromorph D-Day, where you're a German with laser guns. You almost feel bad for them. The game dispenses with all pretense to horror in favour of a competent, if unoriginal, shooting gallery. Being the attention whore that I am, I took to the internet to loudly proclaim its flaws and I was met by a very angry young gentleman who informed me that he wanted games to be mainstream, and if I wanted horror, I should simply turn up the difficulty. I mean, I, do, I don't even... What? The two things aren't even remotely related. That's the gaming equivalent of saying, I want art house cinema to be mainstream, but also cheese. It's a complete non sequitur. Now, never mind the absurd suggestion that difficulty is somehow proportional to fear. The idea that we should be hacking out gameplay features, fundamentally changing the tone of new creations in order to make them mainstream by appealing to as many people as possible is appalling. The concept of stripping the horror from a horror game lest it scare someone is utterly nonsensical. And the only conclusion of this process would be a world in which games exist only in a homogenous sea which offends no one and impresses even fewer. 
I don't like rom-coms. I do not demand that more guns be written into Four Weddings in order to better appeal to my sensibilities. But this is somewhat paradoxical. If any of you have read my column in Varsity, and there's a link in the description for those poor souls who haven't, uh, then you will know that I have always lauded the contribution of so-called casuals to gaming. The diversity brought by new audiences seeking new experiences is good for everyone. It brings experimentation and expansion in new directions, and sometimes they're crap directions, but new blood prevents our industry from stagnating. And yet this YouTuber's comments would have me believe that these dirty casuals are coming over here and taking our horror. The confusion lies in the fact that gamers are prone to conflate the terms games and gaming. A game is an individual. It is built with specific goals, with a particular target audience in mind. It belongs to a specific genre, it has its own trademark mechanics. It is assessed on its own merits or as part of its own individual series. The sentence, I want games to be mainstream, makes no sense. Mainstream from whose perspective exactly? Shooter fans, legion though they are, do not even approach a majority in terms of national entertainment consumers. Angry Birds has passed 1 billion downloads, but I could find a few thousand angry YouTubers who would deny that it's even a game. Mainstream, with regard to individual games, such as Dead Space 3, is devoid of meaning. Gaming, however, is a medium. A medium which is in itself a glorious patchwork of genres and subgenres and cultures which are in turn made up of games. It is gaming that is the fastest growing sector in entertainment. It is gaming that finds favour everywhere from grannies on tablets to enthusiasts on thousand pound rigs. And gaming as a whole can be mainstream precisely because it is made up of these discrete genres which cater for every conceivable taste. The conscious pursuit of mass market appeal and the homogeny that results can only limit the audience for gaming in the long run. To put it bluntly, marketing survival horror at the casual explorer is like adapting Schindler's List for pantomime. <laughs>